Yeah, welcome everybody. <clears throat> Not sure first if everybody is able to see and especially to hear me because I heard that last time there was a little bit of problem with the uh, with the microphone. So would be great first if I get a few reconfirmations that everybody can see and hear me, especially here. So. Uh, but I guess everything is fine. Yeah, wonderful, perfect. So at least this part is now working. <clears throat> and um, yeah, so welcome to the uh, short webinar about uh, sustainable travel. Um, I guess uh, most of you guys know myself, you know me, Frank, um, with Focus Asia for a very, very long time. And um, <clears throat> yeah, it would be not new for those who were able uh, to join uh, Asia on stage uh, on ITV, we did in, uh, in March this year. So it's very similar, it's a bit more detailed, but the same topic, of course. Um, but uh, yeah, <clears throat> even if you visited our, our booth on, uh, on ITV, so maybe a couple of things are new and a couple of uh, new questions uh, came up because uh, everything about sustainable travel. Of course, it's something which we all discuss in in whatever country you're from, uh, more or less now on a, on a daily basis. And um, that's basically also one of my main reasons why I already, already did this, uh, um, <clears throat> well, sort of webinar, this a short presentation on ITV and as a webinar today, uh, that everybody understands something different from, uh, um, from sustainable travel. And uh, therefore, let me start with what the World Tourism Organization uh, gives us as a definition for sustainable travel. They define it as a development which meets the needs of present tourists and host regions while protecting and enhancing opportunity for the future. It is envisaged as, the, as leading to management of all resources in such a way that economic, social and aesthetic needs can be fulfilled while maintaining cultural integrity essential economic, ecologi oops, ecological processes, biological diversity, and life support system. So that's a lot. <clears throat> and um, if you think about what most of you guys probably also have, have in mind if you talk about sustainable travel, is caretaking about environment, environment or animal wildlife protection, very important now, all this uh, to have things CO2 neutral, and of course, waste and uh, garbage management, which is all very, very important, no doubt about that. But what most of people, most of the people now are forgetting, overseeing, is <clears throat> that the social aspects of traveling are also part of sustainable travel. Uh, we talk about impact on culture, discrimination, education, education opportunities uh, for people, fair and equal payments. So this is all uh, equally important, maybe even more important, uh, but let's, let's say at least equally important. And today I would like to give you <clears throat> at least two examples, uh, how you can support and protect local communities and at the same time, vice versa, having the opportunity also to benefit yourself from your travel uh, experiences. Um, I gave the same examples already during, during ITV, but uh, yeah, I want to make it a little bit more detailed uh, today. Um, <clears throat> one example is from a uh, very touristic area, uh, Siem Reap, Cambodia. The other one will be also about a touristic area, Luang Prabang, but they will concentrate a bit more about the areas surrounding uh, uh, this, the areas where the tourists are usually going. Um, but coming back to, to, to Siem Reap, Angkor, I'm sure everybody of you guys knows, knows about it, has around 3 million visitors now uh, every year. And um, <clears throat> basically, only very few benefit from, from your travel. Uh, of course, hotels, people are able to work in the hotels, tour guides, etc., transportation. But those who are able to visit the city of Siem Reap, they will find out that uh, the city itself didn't change so much. 
uh, sure, if you go to Pop Street to these, these kind of places, you will see the changes. But uh, if you go a bit more to the suburbs, to the outskirts, they do not, not at all. And this one small hotel company, they have actually two hotels called Iokambo. There's a Iokambo village and there's a Iokambo resort. Um, they decided to find a way to bring support directly and indirectly to the local community. So starting with the hotels first, um, <clears throat> so as I said, there's a village, there's a resort. The village is a three-star uh, property. The uh, uh, resort is a, is a four-star. The, both hotels are combined to the Iokambo volunteers, which are working with several, uh, so not only one, not on their own, with several different NGOs. And um, <clears throat> it will be important to see both approaches they have. Let's first start a bit with the, uh, uh, with the hotel, um, which I want to show you first a little bit to see already the uh, two of the pictures here on the, uh, on the screen, I guess, the two upper ones, um, to make it a little bit bigger and give you some more impressions. This is the, the lobby of the, of the Yokambo village. Only talking about the Yokambo village now because um, from our point of view, it's a bit nicer and more fitting property for, for Western clients than the, than the resort. So that's the lobby. The pool area you saw already uh, before. It's a quite big one for uh, a bit of a smaller uh, hotel. So very, very nice. Um, these are the deluxe rooms. Um, not, uh, the resort also have not the village has also superior rooms, which are a bit more for, for backpackers. We're not using them. So Focus Asia would start uh, on, the, on the deluxe level. Um, so this hotel gives uh, a fixed share of the profits directly uh, to the NGOs. So meaning whoever stays in, the, in this hotel, in this, in this village, same of course with the resort, is this way directly um, supporting the NGOs. So what, what are the NGOs doing? So what is the, what does the Yokambu volunteers, what they're doing? There's a very nice website, which gives you all the information, uh, <clears throat> which you can see here. I have to put my picture aside so that I can give you the, uh, uh, the website. It's yokambovolunteers.com, Yokambu volunteers in one word. And um, <clears throat> if you go on this website, if you go on the next page there, then you have a very nice overview of what they are basically doing. So we talk about school improvement programs, um, helping providing clean, uh, clean water, teaching village uh, school children, build a house in the, in the countryside, and it doesn't sound so important, but you don't believe how much it is, installing a toilet in some of the small villages and, uh, and outskirts. So these are basically the, the five areas you come volunteers uh, is, um, is focusing on. And uh, <clears throat> there are several options. So as I said before, directly just by uh, overnighting in the, in the hotel. And if you do that indirectly, it means um, you can also volunteer in some of these areas. Um, you can do this for a shorter period of time. You can do this for a longer period of time. This is something you can, where you can contact um, Ucamo volunteer also directly. You can also go uh, via us. Uh, you might know that we have a sister company, uh, Asia Reps, uh, which is uh, representing a couple of hotels. And Ucamo is also one of them, and especially uh, this projects. You might also have seen one of our uh, newsletters recently that for September we have a special uh, project together with Eocambo. So if you stay a uh, third night in, in CM Rep and in this hotel, then we donate a bike for children in, the, in CM Rep. There will be more of this kind of projects. So if you just, uh, you will just see this on our, our newsletters, uh, I think on a, on a regular basis. And otherwise, we are always open for any idea also from, you, from your side, for your clients, whatever you want to do. Just contact us, contact your combo directly, or you can also contact, of course, uh, Asia. So <clears throat> this is one example. Let me go back to my, to my third page here, <clears throat> what we were talking about. 
Yocambo uh, is one of many opportunities uh, you even have in, in, in CM Rep. Uh, another one uh, we're mentioning uh, on, the, on the lower part here of the uh, uh, of my slide. Uh, there's a place like a Haven restaurant uh, where the main purpose is of teaching disadvantaged young adults uh, valuable work, life skills, um, as well as creating good and well-paid jobs for people from the local uh, community. Um, and another one, which is probably very known, very much known already to most of you, is the, uh, the Fari Circus. Uh, which are very famous and well known already in the world because they go now for performances also to, uh, to Europe. Uh, but basically, it was founded in, the, in Batambang and uh, it's a similar purpose than the, the Haven restaurant, uh, <clears throat> giving disadvantaged young, young people, young adults, uh, an opportunity uh, to get jobs um, <clears throat> and to get yeah, financial uh, support. That's an example for, for Siem Reap. Uh, in Cambodia, as I said, there are many others. Um, I will mention this a couple of times. Uh, we are always open to discuss opportunities with you, whatever you have in mind for, uh, for, your, for your clients, whatever you prefer, whatever kind of things you do not prefer. Uh, therefore, we just always open for any, uh, any request, any discussion with you. The second example I want to I want to show you is about uh, uh, Luang Prabang. Um, here we're more concentrating on non-tourist areas because this is even one, this is one of the main purposes here to bring tourists to areas which usually tourists would not visit at all. Thinking about sustainable travel and also cultural impacts, this is also something which has to be done carefully. Yeah, because the idea is not that we bring Western tourists to some of these villages uh, and to yeah, um, bring our culture to their culture. It is more in a way to understand their culture. And this is what I mentioned before, gives also us an opportunity to benefit from our travel experience, experiences. So what I want to introduce here is something uh, <clears throat> which is called uh, Fair Track, um, as I said. It's about bringing tourists in small numbers to small villages uh, outside of uh, Luang Prabang. Um, this is a project which was done for the last couple of years. Uh, <clears throat> this was done by our uh, corporation partner, Thai Trail, and uh, they, they brought students from all over the world, Western students, uh, into this area to build some of these eco mud bungalows. Uh, <clears throat> You see here on the two upper, uh, two upper pictures, which are really, really nicely uh, done, uh, inside and outside. There's always one bungalow in one village. And the idea is that those villages are connected and reachable within a one-day track. So what you can do now with the three bungalows, which are actually now built in three different villages, is you're starting in one program, you walk to the first bungalow, uh, stay there, you go next day, or you can also stay longer, uh, but you go then uh, for another uh, day track to, uh, to the next village and to the next bungalow, and so on until you're coming back to Luang Prabang. Um, there are lots of small programs you can do in, the, in these villages, and they are prepared, of course, yeah? and they give you an opportunity uh, to help them to just view how, they, how their, daily life, their daily life uh, takes place. So it, it is really a slow down, calm way of experiencing outskirts, um, country life in, uh, in Laos and around uh, Luang Prabha. Again, same here, further information, I would always recommend you go, go into the, to the website. Um, the website here is uh, fairtrack.org and uh, show you a small, uh, um, small, well, just one page here um, where you see the division of, uh, of Fairtrack. Yeah, so um, <clears throat> highly recommend looking on this website. If in, on the other side, if you have further questions, please just uh, contact us. I can highly recommend this, uh, this, small, uh, this small travel. And as you can see that, uh, it's a very 
clean and safe way to experience, have a different experience and a kind of a soft adventure as well. Um, same is here in Lower Pavan. Yeah, so same here we have other options what we what we can do in this uh, in this area. Um, <clears throat> as I said before, the chess tour examples. Of course, we don't want to force anyone to book such tours, excursions, or, or hotels. But as much as we can from uh, from Focus Asia, we try to support such projects. So please ask us. Of course, not only of the social aspects of sustainable travel, but don't want to uh, say this is not uh, equally important, but also, uh, of course, what environment and, uh, and wildlife. Um, just wildlife also would, is also worth at least to, to mention this maybe shortly here. Um, the, <clears throat> very often we're discussing the, uh, the elephant camps and getting so many different kind of requests. It's a very complex topic and one can have very, very different and uh, yeah, very different opinions on that. For us, we do not believe in elephant riding, uh, just to say, to say this very straightforward, as a matter of respect towards animals. And it's also not necessary. Yeah, it's, this is more a circus thing. Uh, there are so many other nice places where you can experience elephants in a really natural and respectful habitat, especially in Laos, which is, of course, which is a country of uh, one million uh, elephants, uh, but also in, uh, in Cambodia, uh, also in Thailand. So if you have any requests, any questions for your, for your clients, please contact us. You can also contact us about uh, if clients are coming with a certain elephant camp, asking for, uh, for our opinion. So we would be more than happy to uh, discuss with you which elephant camp would be, from our point of view, um, feasible and uh, protecting the, the, the life and the, uh, <clears throat> the health of the elephants in a way that we can recommend travel to this, uh, to this area. Well, yeah, basically that's what I wanted to, uh, <clears throat> to discuss with you uh, today, what I want to uh, present a little bit. Um, as I mentioned before, there are similar areas and projects, of course, in the, our other destinations. You can find it in Thailand, you can find it in, in Myanmar, Gi or uh, partner there also has lots of uh, wonderful ideas for, uh, for Myanmar. Um, <clears throat> we can do this in, uh, in, in China, our newest destination. There are lots of places in Indonesia, uh, which we're also offering. So um, it's available everywhere, uh, but of course we need your support, we need you guys to tell us uh, what kind of projects would be interesting, how you want to uh, uh, include that. Um, so please contact us, contact whoever you're always in, uh, usually in contact with, and uh, we're happy to give you more examples. So yeah, that's okay for, that's it for today, from my, from my point of view. Um, so happy to answer some questions now um, on, the, on the chat, uh, waiting then for, for your questions, and I will be still here to reply to that. Just waiting for the first question. I think they're coming some. In the meantime, I'm ready to go. So tour packages including, well, when it comes to uh, uh, the question from, uh, from Mr. Sommer, so um, including the hotel in, in Siem Reap is easy. So uh, if you just let us know uh, in your, in your uh, request, you would like to have the Eocombo uh, village included, and then we do that. Uh, as I said before, we don't want to force anyone. That's why we don't put it automatically in. But uh, any request here for Cambodia, for Simra, just mention, please include Eocambo, and we are more than happy to do that. For the, 
for the one Pavang, when we talk about uh, the, uh, the, the bungalows and the trek, uh, we have a four days tour, uh, so the easiest and fastest way, which I was mentioning before. So, uh, which is then focusing mainly on, uh, on tracking, of course. Um, so, if you want to have that, uh, just um, send us a short email. If you want to have a, a longer one, say, okay, for example, uh, staying one day uh, in each of the, uh, the villages. Yeah, so then we have uh, seven days, if I'm not correct. Correct, then we have seven days. Uh, then just uh, put in your email and then uh, we, we send it to you. Happy to do that. Any other questions? We may go also back on the which month of the year. Well, when it comes to tracking, then um, I would of course recommend to avoid the, the rainy season because uh, then it will be very muddy. Um, so dry season for Luan Pavang is uh, winter. So <clears throat> I would start in, uh, in November and I would go until March, April. That's, that's the best time. It's also not that hot, especially in, uh, in Luang Prabang, yeah, which is also a bit fresh in the uh, chilly in winter. So for Luang Prabang, as I said, winter is the, the best the best time. When we talk about uh, CM Rep, um, the uh, most recommended travel season um, is basically the same. Uh, it's also winter. However, we're just in a nice hotel, but of course, if you want to enjoy the pool and you want to have a lot of sun, then uh, best is also you go in the uh, in winter. Otherwise, especially Cambodia, Siem Reap and the temples are wonderful also to visit in summer uh, because uh, rain usually doesn't last for uh, for a long time, uh, at least not in the month uh, in the month of uh, uh, May, June. In August, usually you have a sm uh, short dry season period anyhow. So for Cambodia, um, I wouldn't see any difference uh, for whatever month uh, you're, you're going there. Any other questions? Doesn't matter if there's nothing coming from you from you guys now. Then um, you know that you always can reach us by email, by phone, whatever. Uh, just again, the idea was uh, to give you a little bit of an idea. Um, one, not to forget that sustainable travel is more than uh, uh, nature and wildlife. It's also also the social aspects are important. I want to give you two examples in Siem Reap and in Luang Prabang. Anything else? Contact us, please, and ask whatever would be important for you because otherwise I will not make it longer than uh, necessary. Uh, you know that we also always um, have a video from this um, from this webinar so in case you want to review it uh, just uh, also send us an email and any other questions also afterwards. So if nothing is coming anymore then I would wish everybody a wonderful day. Thanks for joining the, the webinar. Best regards from uh, Munich. And uh, yeah, hope to see you also soon again in person um, in whatever country, whatever travel show. And um, yeah, have a nice day. And I say goodbye.